Welcome to our virtual worship service of the First Congregational Church of Portland, Connecticut. We are a member of the denomination, the United Church of Christ, and our congregation is open and affirming. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I'm Jane Hawkin, the pastor, and I thank you for joining us. Please listen to the prelude Kasha Bro has created for today, May 17th. Today's service has been crafted by the Council of Conference Ministers of the United Church of Christ as a gift to the congregations in this church season called Eastertide. I trust that you will find the service to be nurturing and inspiring. Even though we aren't worshiping in, at the church, the needs and the maintenance of the building continue, as well as our ongoing business. To that point, I am now going to read a call to a special congregational meeting, and this call will also be emailed to the congregation. The members of the First Congregational Church of Portland, Connecticut, are hereby notified of a special congregational meeting to be held via Zoom video conference on Tuesday, May 26, 2020 at 7 p.m. for the following purposes. To receive and act upon the minutes of the January 26, 2020 annual program and budget meeting, to receive the recommendation to replace the center section of the roof during the summer of 2020 at a cost of $15,548, to receive and act upon the recommendation for a congregational vote to be held via email on May 27th and 28th, 2020, to act upon any other business proper to come before said meeting. Respectfully submitted, Jeanette Hodge, President, Marcy Clark, Clerk. And now let us worship God, bring praise to Jesus Christ, and be empowered by the Holy Spirit. The timing of this worship video is in the month of May 2020, and during the month of May in the United Church of Christ, we honor Mental Health Sunday. This year, it's marked as May 17th. Regardless of the date, we honor and celebrate our siblings in Christ who struggle with mental illness. Individuals caught in the grip of mental illness are all around us. They are our friends, our co-workers, our family members, our parishioners. They are us. They, we, are beautiful in our gifts, our love, our talents, our wisdom, our play. And then they, we, are not so lovely. We are needy or angry, withdrawn or reliable, demanding, ungrateful, or unendingly sad. And they, we, are beloved children of God just the way we are. In the United Church of Christ, we embrace three core values, God's continuing testament, extending extravagant welcome, and changing lives. All three of these values are lived out well as we affirm that mental health and wellness are components of human health and wellness. And then we create practices, advocate for policies, and seek out leadership, not just inclusion, that ends stigma around mental illness and supports holistic approaches to health and wellness. Welcome to worship. May you be blessed in your whole being by the gifts and graces of God offered here. Hello, my name is Jana. I'm one of the pastors in the bigger United Church of Christ who cheers for your pastor and for your church, and I'm glad to be with you today. Something's different, isn't it? We're not going to church. 
We're not going to the big church building where we usually go. We're going to church right in our own houses. Sometimes we are going to church in our own house with a video, and that can be very good. I wanted to make sure you also knew that you could make your own church service. I wonder if you've tried it. I sure hope you will. Maybe you're so big that you have a Bible that was given to you. And if you're so big you have your own Bible, then maybe you could find a page that you know, a story that you really like, and you could read it for everybody in your house. And you could talk a little bit about why you like that story so much, what you wonder about in it. And that would be a very good thing. Even if you're not so big to have your own Bible, maybe you know a song that you learned in Sunday school and you could help everybody in your house sing it. Maybe you'll sing something like, Jesus loves me, this I know, if you know that song. It could even be a silly song. Maybe at your church you learned this song. It starts out, Allelu, 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 alleluia, praise ye the Lord. That's a silly song. If the others in your house know it, they might sing that one along with you too. And everyone in your house together can take a turn saying a prayer. Telling God what you're thinking. Telling God what you're feeling. Telling God thank you. Telling God when you're sorry. You might have people you love and people you care about and people you're wondering about that you'd like to say their names and ask God to help and bless them. And you can do that too. I'll be thinking about you as you make your own church service. The grown-ups in your house will know how to send me a note and let me know how it's going. And I am so looking forward to coming to see you one day at your church. And I am so looking forward to the day when all of us will be back in the big church buildings where we love to be. Bye-bye.
Happy Easter, everyone. Miss you. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Holy love, like the beautiful blossom of the lily, the joy of Easter seems to fade so quickly. Its brilliance buried by the withering words of a daily digest of news and noise that seems not to care that you have reordered the world. The wonder of a world made new seems crushed by the urgency which viruses and vitriol would voice as the daily ritual of remembrance. How easy, O oh Holy One, to re-enter the tombs of our own making and those rooms fashioned by our fear and our fatigue. So grant us the gift of noticing that lies just beyond the fading flower of every yesterday. Refashion our focus on your surging strength, your promised power, yearning to take center stage in our lives. Like the unopened bud that awaits the beckoning power of the sun, open our hearts to your Holy Spirit already around and within us that we may be readied, renewed, and blossomed into the beauty for which you have created us in Christ all along. Yes, Holy One, renew us and your whole creation, that we may be signs of your resurrection love in word and work throughout the world. May it be so. May it be so. Amen. Dios habla hoy del libro de los Hechos, capítulo 17, versículos 22 al 31. Pablo se levantó en medio de ellos en el Areápago y dijo, Atenienses, por todo lo que veo, ustedes son gente muy religiosa. Puedes admirar los lugares donde Estedes celebran sus cultos. He encontrado un altar que tiene escritas estas palabras. A un Dios no conocido. Pues bien, lo que ustedes adoran sin conocer es lo que yo vengo a anunciarles. El Dios que hizo el mundo y todas las cosas que hay en él es Señor del Cielo y de la tierra. No vive en templos hechos por los hombres, ni necesita que nadie haga nada por él, pues él es quien nos da a todos la vida, el aire y las demás cosas. De un solo hombre hizo él todas las naciones para que viven en toda la tierra. Y les ha señalado el tiempo y el lugar en que vi deben vivir. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live. Para que busquen a Dios, y quizás, como a tientas puedan encontrarlo, aunque en verdad Dios no está lejos de cada uno de nosotros. Porque en Dios vivimos, nos move movemos y existimos. Como también algunos de los poetas de ustedes dijeron, 
somos descendientes de Dios. Siendo pues descendientes de Dios, no debemos pensar que Dios sea como las imágenes de oro, plata o piedra que los hombres hacen según su propia imaginación. Dios pasó por alto en otros tiempos la ignorancia de la gente, pero ahora ordena a todos, en todas partes, que se vuelvan a Él. Porque Dios ha fijado un día en el cual juzgará al mundo con justicia por medio de un hombre que Él ha escogido y que dio prueba a todos cuando lo resucitó. Que el Señor añada bendición a su palabra. And so they would search for God and perhaps grope for God and find God, though indeed God is not far from each and every one of us. For in God we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we too are God's offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now God commands all people everywhere to repent, because God has fixed a day on which God will have the whole world judged in righteousness by a man whom God has appointed. And of this, God has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. God has indeed reordered our world the way we were before seems so long ago, and we find ourselves living in a new reality. We have discontinued practices that we thought were unchangeable. It turns out that the God who made the world and everything in it does not live in shrines made by human hands. I can remember a Sunday practice from my childhood. Many Sundays after church, my mom and dad would load us kids up in the front and we would go for a Sunday ride. No destination in mind, daddy would just drive. Invariably, he would get lost somewhere on Long Island. In my younger years, I would cry because I was afraid that we were lost. But my dad would say, you are not lost. As long as you are with mommy and me, you can't get lost. As I grew, I came to understand that and find comfort that no matter where I was, if I were with my parents, I could never get lost. In these long weeks, when we've been cloistered in our houses, many of us have been feeling lost. We went into this time of stay safe, stay home, fearing deep in our hearts that being physically separated from our faith communities would cause us to be separated from God. Fearing that if we were not in our favorite pews, that we would not be able to find God. We thought we needed our church buildings, our beautiful sanctuaries to feel God's warmth enveloping us in love, but it turns out that the God who made the world and everything in it does not live in shrines made by human hands. Friends, it's not only the separation from our buildings that has us feeling off kilter. We've all been living through a nightmare, an international nightmare. Some of us have lost loved ones. Some of us live in fear of losing loved ones. Some of us are suffering from the virus, and some of us are suffering from lost income because of the virus. Some of us are bored from too many days looking at the same walls, and some of us are forced to work at home, while some of us wished we could stay home and not work, endangering ourselves and our loved ones to keep essential businesses open for the rest of us. Some of us, the heroes among us, are working in hospitals and nursing homes, working as EMTs and police officers and firefighters and orderlies, many of whom are overwhelmed and overworked, trying 
hard to keep people alive. Some of us don't know if we can continue to watch as more and more people get sick and die. This is indeed a long national nightmare. Those people whom Paul encountered in Athens, they had some inkling that there was a God whom they did not know. Paul had observed as he walked around their city that they had objects of worship in their shrines and that among them was an altar to an unknown God. He understood that these were people hungering for an experience of the holy. And so he told them about the one true God, and he let them in on the secret that the one true God could not be confined to their temples. No, he shared with them that the one true God was not far from each of them, not far from each one of us. He let them know that in God, we live and move and have our being. As Paul told them about Jesus, how he'd lived and how he died, but most importantly, he shared, he told them about how he had been resurrected. He shared with them the saving balm of the good news, that we are a resurrection people. He told them, and he is telling us still, that death does not have the final word. We are living in a time when we need to remember every day that we are a resurrection people. These are indeed hard times that we're going through. There are times when it seems as if we have been abandoned by God. But Paul is right here speaking to us from 2,000 years ago. The Apostle Paul is reminding us that no matter how bleak the time, God is still Emmanuel, God with us. He's reminding us that we are God's people and no amount of sheltering in place can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. No tiny microbe can take away from us that truth that we are a resurrection people. You know, when I grew up and had children of my own, we would sometimes take those Sunday rides after church and we would purposefully turn down streets that we'd never been on. We would jump off of the interstate uh, at an exit that we'd never taken before. This was before GPS, and we would always get lost. We grown-ups had to look to the sun for direction and keep turning until we found a familiar street or a business that let us know what town we were in. But in the back seat, our children just looked out the windows, not worried about a thing because they knew that no, they could never get lost while they were with us, their parents. Friends, we are in a difficult time right now. We feel lost and afraid, afraid that nothing will ever be the same. Nothing will ever be like it was before. We've also learned so many things in this time. The most important thing we've learned is that the God who made the world and everything in it does not live in shrines made by human hands. We've learned that no matter what, in God we live and move and have our being. Things may change. God doesn't. We can never get lost. We have Jesus as our guide, and God is the foundation of our lives. We have the Holy Spirit filling us with such love that it just has to spill over onto others. Things change. God doesn't. Things change. God doesn't. Things change. God doesn't. Amen. Amen.
An invitation to generosity. Like God's love, our generosity cannot be contained by the coronavirus. Instead, our generosity is abundant during this pandemic because of who and whose we are. As the United Church of Christ, we have always advocated with the most vulnerable to ensure they are supported nourished, and empowered to live into God's creation. When you give during this pandemic, your church, conference, and broader UCC are able to advocate for the health and equity of the most vulnerable affected by COVID-19. We invite you to give generously by writing a check, using auto bill pay, or online giving. We invite you to give to your church, to our church's wider mission, and to give to a person or a business serving others during this pandemic. When you give, post why you give to your church and the United Church of Christ during this pandemic at hashtag why I give UCC so that we can share and celebrate with each other. Prayer of Dedication Creator God, in you we live and move and have our being. So take our monetary gifts and bless each church to serve the most vulnerable during the coronavirus pandemic, that we may truly become a just world for all. Amen. In the fall of 2015, I began walking the Red Road, recovery from addiction. Creator God placed in my heart to start a talking circle. Three months of rejection in Billings community led me to Billings First Church, where I was welcomed with open arms and asked when I wanted to start. I was speechless. God had opened a door when I had many doors slammed in my face. March 10th, 2016, we had our first White Eagle talking circle. Today, there is a talking circle every day for those walking the Red Road. I hope. We were
Friends, as we have gathered in diverse places and spaces today for worship, we offer you this closing prayer. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. Siblings in Christ Jesus, our Lord, we are one body united across time and space, walking in the calling, in the anointing, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. We are one body, sharing our hopes and dreams for the kingdom of God, being salt and light in these days. And as one body, we leave this virtual space, united in love, united in hope, and united in our commitment to serve God, to serve our communities, to serve the world, and to love each other. Go therefore, having received the blessing of the living God, who in love created you, the blessing of the risen Christ, who in love redeems you, and the blessing of their Holy Spirit, who continues to abide with and brood within the body of Christ and is the lifeblood of the church that we love. Because you are blessed, become a blessing as you proclaim the love of God in word and deed to all the ends of the earth.